Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is just going to be a quick video. I'm Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a quick video outlining the divisions of the NHL and where I think each team is going to stand. In the Northern Division, the Canadian Division, I think because they stay padded in a nice Nate Schmidt to fix their defense, which was their big hole, the Canucks will actually come in first in that division. They got Thatcher Demko, who is a great young goaltender. Now they got Holpe there as well. I think they'll be good. I think the Leafs, because of the acquisitions they were able to make and bring in, will be a very good team as well. Frederick Anderson is a goalie that gets too much hate at times. I think he's going to have a very good season. Joe Thornton is a nice veteran playmaker that you bring up there as well. And has been getting time in practice with the uh, first line. So we'll see what he's able to do there. I just think because of moving parts and the different guys coming in, that's going to take a little bit more of adjustment. And that's kind of the same with the Edmonton Oilers, they brought in a guy like Kyle Torres will be a big third line addition. A guy like Cliff Baum coming out, I think, drops them down where I would have had them competing for first and second. I now move them down to third. I think Cliff Baum's a big loss. And then those Montreal Canadiens are fourth for me. Carey Price, I think, is going to be the reason why they get over the hump compared to the Jets, Flames, and then obviously the Senators will be the last place team. But I think the Canadians get over the hub big time because of Carey Price. Jesperi Kakaniemi is going to have a much better season. That team runs through him and Suzuki as the young studs building up. And then Philippe Deneau is one of the most underrated centers in all of hockey. So they got a nice team there. Weber had a great bounce back season. They got Jeff Petrie. They got Flurry. They got others there. Um, Ponomariev as well. So they got a nice team budding there. The Jets, I think, will just miss it because, again, if Connor Hellbuck is going to stand on his head, have a great season. But you're not going to always be able to get over the hump because of your goalie carrying you. If they have a more structured and play a little bit better overall game plan this year, then they could propel up into that top four. But I think they will be fifth. The Flames will be sixth. They made a lot of moves. The biggest move is bringing in their next franchise goaltender, which I think will work out for them. It's just bringing in a new starting goaltender that's your main man. That's a huge adjustment coming into a season that you don't have a lot of practice to get the chemistry with them. That could affect them early in the first 10 to 15, 20, and I think that might be what hurts them. And then again, sends or last. Uh, we'll go to the West now. The West has a clear shot number th or top three. Excuse me. The Avalanche are absolutely stacked. There's no need to explain that. They should finish number one, especially if Gruby and then Francois continue to have a good season this year. The only issue with Grubauer is injury history. Other than that, he's been a very solid NHL goalie. We got the Vegas Golden Knights at two. They have people that could win the William Jennings down there. They got um, Robin Leonard, and they, of course, got Mark Andre Flower Flurry, one of my favorite goalies, and they're going to have a great team down there. They lost some offense, so it's going to be interesting how they patch those little pieces together. But because of their defense, their goaltending, I think they'll still be up pat in second. Third would be the Blues. Uh, Huso's going to have to step up as a backup, but I think Bennington's going to have a great bounce back year, and I think that team's going to continue. You're going to see guys like Schwartz do well again, and they're going to continue to show great progress and be able to stay in the top three. They also, of course, got benefited by the division they got put into. And then the, this is where it gets tricky. Four through six in this division, I think, can kind of go anywhere. Uh, this goes between the Kings and Wild. I'm going to give it to the Wild. they got guys that have been there, done that a little bit more on their squad. The Kings are still growing and budding, and I think they will be the team to just miss it in fifth. But I think the Wild, Talbot, they really like him. They banked on him early. They got Kyle Kocken in there. They kept Alex Stalock, who really has good chemistry with their defenders, an underrated goalie and moving the puck. So I think they add some good things there. And then the Kings will be the team that I think is going to challenge them the most. Or the Ducks, one of those two other California teams, could challenge them the most. Because the Coyotes have made it clear that they're clearly trying to change house, rebuild, get rid of cap, and do all these different hood spot things down there. And then I believe that the Sharks, just because of the way this division is by default, they'll be a nice, scrappy, fun young team. But they'll just end up falling and coming into last place here. Uh, now we'll go to our Central Division. This one, again, I think you kind of have a pretty good understanding of the t of the top teams. I believe that will be the Stars, the Tampa Bay Lightning, and the Canes in no specific order. That came from last year in the specific order. Tampa Bay still stacked, even missing Kucherov. They got Stammer coming back. They got a great team down there. They, of course, got Andre Vasilevsky. They're going to be perfectly fine. Palat's one of the more underrated forwards down there. They'll be a good team and set. Don't worry about Tampa. The Canes, they're a great team coached by Rod Brindamore. They're going to be fantastic. They got Mirazik and Reimer still in net there, and they've played great with those two guys, and I think this might be the year that they're going to play so well, they might be right behind Tampa. I think they will trade for that goaltender at the deadline. 
or before. I think they will pick in another guy, a veteran, whoever, another team doesn't need that might have fallen off or so on or so forth, and they'll be able to go in and get someone. That could be from the Sharks if they want to go. If Martin Jones is having a bounce back year and you want to take his contract, maybe him, maybe a Dubnik, somebody along those lines. I see them potentially getting this year. But either way, I still think they got the firepower to be second just because of how well that team's coached and ran and how well they just have those great young talented scouted guys like the geekies of the world and others walmarts that are able to come in and make an impact that they're able to find and scout very well the stars again hudobin yes he had some issues he had covid bless his soul great that he's getting well now but they also have him uh, bishop of course is going to be out for pretty much the whole season but with him and jake ottinger ottinger is one of the best young prospect goalies in the game he played well for one period it was in the playoffs last year i think he's going to continue to continue to develop very very handsomely and he'll have a good season there as well with them and if he has to start early he'll be perfectly fine with doing that they got benefited one blessing in disguise unfortunately as we wish the dallas stars well with their players that all uh, contracted the COVID or enclosed contract trace and we're praying for them. The one blessing in disguise is for Hadobin to have more time to get ready with the three-game delay. Now they're starting on the 19th. So we'll see if he will be ready to get kicking and firing as soon as they start. Uh, but that's, um, that's what we have for that. And now we have the Blue Jackets fourth. And then we have the Predators fifth. The Blue Jackets, I think, will top the Preds. John Tortorella always pulls the most out of his guy. I'm tired of just, I usually doubt and put them as a team that's right on the bubble. I'm going to put them as a team that's in this year. I doubted him too much and usually get bit by that. So I'll put them as the team that's in. The Preds are the team that will just miss it. Getting a Gronlin back that knows your system, though, would it look like he was going to go elsewhere. That's a nice, sneaky move that they were able to keep him in house. They're still going to be a competitive team. It's going to bank, obviously, on how Pecorine is able to have a bounce back year and then how UC Soros is able to do. I think both of those guys will do fine. But I feel like just with this division, with how the firepower you have of the Canes and Tampa, and then you have the Stars there as well, who made the cup run last year. I think Bonus is going to have a good first coach of season, the Jackets. I think it's going to be hard for them. And then last to round out the division, we have the Panthers, the Hawks, and the Wings. So now we go to the last division in this video that we're going to be ranking, and that is the East Division. The East Division is tough. Some people have put some of the teams that I have in the bottom. When I've looked, some people have put Buffalo in the playoffs. I have Buffalo and the Devils, to tell you, at the 7-8 and eight spot. But I think both of those teams will show good competitive um, seasons and be able to show progress via their young players. Guys that you want to see progress this year, the East years of the world, will be able to progress and so on and so forth. I think, uh, obviously, in Buffalo, the Hall and uh, Eichel thing, you're going to want to see how that works. You're going to want to see how your netminder, Linus Allmark, if he's able to potentially be a guy for you in the future. Uh, the Penguins, I think, will be a team that's just out at sixth place, along with the Rangers will be the team right above them. Those teams are going to be competing, but the Pittsburgh Penguins are a team that is not doesn't have the depth that you're used to them seeing. They got those nice, scrappy... McCann's of the world and so on and so forth that I like but they don't have that same full three-line scoring depth you used to seeing the Penguins get it was interesting to get rid of a Bukestad to bring in a Jan Mark uh, who's a, kind of maybe a little bit below him but I mean whatever so have you they, they just have a team that doesn't have the same depth Matheson you have to hope you're able to turn around I understand Hornquist wasn't necessarily fitting into the way you wanted to allow other forwards to play anymore but it's interesting to move on from someone like him and bring in a Matheson who's been struggle bunnying lately. But we'll have to see what happens there in Pittsburgh. I think they're going to be one of the teams out along with the Rangers. And then the four teams in are going to be the Capitals. The Capitals are a team, even unfortunately with Henrik Lundqvist having to be out with his heart condition. They picked up Greg Anderson. They have Copley. And then they, of course, got Sam Sonor, who has to have a great year for them to be in this top four. But because of him... I've, and they're obviously studded offense with bat, led by Backstrom and Ovechkin and um, Kuznetsov. They're going to be able to have a very good season there. Dmitry Orlov is also a very good defense and one of the more underrated guys back there on defense as well. The Bruins, the Bruins are hurt by a lot of injuries. That's why I got them down at third. They got a lot of different injuries coming into this year, and that is going to hurt their team. But having Tuka Reyes back between the pipes is going to immensely help their team with Yaroslav Alak. That's obviously Jennings caliber 
uh, goaltending there to win the William Jennings Award. So that is something that you got to look out for there. They got great goaltending. The New York Islanders I have is second. Barry Trotz is one of the best coaches in all of hockey. How Sorokin comes over as a young goaltender and also how obviously Varley, who played really solid last year and big in many moments, is going to play, and I think that's another tandem that's going to be very good and overlooked coming into the season, just because Sorokin obviously played great overseas, but still doesn't have that NHL experience, but that is a tandem you definitely have to look out for and watch for. The team I have in first is the Philadelphia Flyers, I think. They just have a lot of the depth. They have a lot of the forward depth, a lot of the defense depth, and they have a lineup that gets stuff done spread out, similar to the Islanders, which is exactly why I have the Islanders at two, where teams like the Rangers, Pens, and Buffalo are more top-heavy now and don't have the depth, other than the Rangers, if they're young guys like Kako steps back and has a good season. Other guys that come up have a very good season. They could be the surprise team because of young guys really stepping up and supplanting themselves this year. But as of now, they don't have proven depth for them. Let's put it that way. The Pens just don't have the same depth they used to. And Buffalo still is top-heavy. And the Devils are very top-heavy. Uh, so uh, they, these are the teams I believe will compete in the East. And I, again, the top four teams in each division I have, the top team, Flyers, Avs, Tampa, Canucks, the second teams... I have our Isles, Knights, Canes, and Leafs for our respective division. The third place teams I have are Bruins, Blues, Stars, and Oilers. And the fourth place teams I have are Caps, Wild, Jackets, and Canadians. This has been the NHL standings predictions video. I'll check back midseason to see how this goes. If it's a complete fiasco, if anything's actually close to being right. Uh, but everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. The season is here. The season is upon us. Are you ready for some hockey? Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. Peace out.